Hi friend, I hope you are doing well today. Thank you guys so much for being here. This video is going to be a little on the longer side as I'm going into a pretty detailed story. Um, so just think of it as like a little podcast and maybe you can leave it playing as you're driving or you're folding laundry or doing dishes, um, whatever you have going on while you have this playing. I pray that this story brings you peace and some hope and joy and I pray that it makes your soul feel lifted up and that you can feel the nearness and the goodness of God. It's a story of a girl whose life and heart and mindset was definitely not marked by joy and peace but by God's grace, she received a mental, emotional, and spiritual healing that she could have never imagined. In case you didn't know, the story is about me. My name is Liz Work, and I am here today to share with you the story of how Jesus healed my postpartum depression and despair pretty much instantaneously. Um, through the power of His Holy Spirit, and I'm really excited to share this testimony with you. Um, I'm just going to pray really quick before I get into it. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your presence here with us today. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you that it is your delight to bring healing and wholeness restoration and redemption to your children. Thank you that it is not your desire um, for us to walk in bondage to sin, in bondage to despair, um, but that you came, you sent your son here to earth to die on the cross for us, to die a sacrificial death so that we could have life and life abundant, Lord. You want spiritual abundance for us. You want spiritual healing for us. And you are so capable of accomplishing that in and through us. Thank you so much, Jesus, for the healing that you worked in me. I pray that by me sharing this testimony, um, you would use it to bless the lives of those that hear it. I pray, Lord, that you will, by your Spirit's power, work healing and wholeness in any man or any woman that is dealing with the darkness of depression and hopelessness. Thank you for your goodness. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. <laughs> so where to begin? Um, just to kind of give a little backstory, um, as some of you may already know, I have dealt with something called eczema for a very long time, 20 plus years, ever since I was a little girl. And if you don't know what eczema is, it affects your skin hugely. <laughs> um, ever since I was a little girl, I've had red itchy rashes. Um, all over my body in varying degrees and it's caused a lot of mental and emotional distress. Um, going back into some of my prayer journals from when I was like 10 years old, um, you'll find journal entries of me just crying out to God, asking Him to heal me, um, wondering why I had this illness, um, blaming myself for it, um, and I think unwittingly, eventually over time, I began to equate my worth with my health and um, began to feel like it was my fault, maybe I had done something wrong, maybe I wasn't doing enough for God to want to heal me. Just had been in and out of some pretty dark places mentally throughout my life. Um, so that's kind of a little backstory of like my health history, which I believe plays a pretty huge part into how I got to where I was with postpartum depression and just despair um, and hopelessness. There's so much that I could go into about my journey with um, 
this illness and also um, I guess the layers that were just building up to get me to the point of having postpartum depression. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to fast forward um, to 2020, March 2020, when I married my wonderful husband, Jesse Work, um, in March of 2020. And in April of 2020, I unexpectedly became pregnant. I just want to preface by saying that I know a pregnancy and new life forming inside a woman's womb is a miracle. It's incredible. It's a gift. I know that some women um, are desperate to receive that gift. And so um, I just want to state that I know that it's a huge blessing. Um, and I'm sorry if you're in a place where you cannot conceive um, and you're longing for that blessing, but the Lord hasn't granted it yet. All that said, I really, really wanted to find healing before conceiving and before becoming pregnant and before becoming a mom. And so getting pregnant so quickly after getting married and before I had healed my eczema um, or before the Lord had healed my eczema gave me a lot of anxiety and fear and um, it was largely because one of my worst fears was passing my eczema along to my children because I know in many cases it can be hereditary. And so, you know, I dealt with eczema so much on my own, um, but I just thought that I could not, I would not be able to handle having a child that had eczema. Um, I just knew that it would wreck me mentally and emotionally. Um, and I felt like I was at my wit's end trying to find healing for myself that I didn't know how I would be able to deal with my own symptoms and um, have a baby that had <laughs> symptoms as well. Um, so my whole pregnancy, I had a ton of anxiety and fear and honestly just resentment that I was pregnant before I wanted to be and before I felt like I was ready to be um, physically and mentally and emotionally. Um, I'm not necessarily proud of the way that I felt about it, but I just want to be completely transparent with you um, and just lay it all out there that that's where I was at. As I said, I dealt with a lot of fear and anxiety throughout my pregnancy, not necessarily about my son's birth or about actually being a mom because I had had a, a ton of experience with children throughout my life nannying and stuff like that but um, just the aspect of not being physically well um, and the fear of my son being born not physically well so with the hormone shifts of my pregnancy my eczema did progressively get worse and worse all throughout my pregnancy from about mid-pregnancy on it was just kind of a slow progression getting worse and worse and i think that a large part of that in hindsight was because of how anxious i was and how fearful and how constantly stressed i was after i gave birth to my beautiful son um, I was so thankful to see that his skin was clear and he looked healthy and um, it was a very smooth and beautiful birth. Um, but about four months into his life, he started to form eczema um, and it got to where it was covering a lot of his face on top of his head it was arms and his legs and some on his belly and his back it was just basically all over him and um, it was really red and angry and made him itchy um, and to be completely honest I felt betrayed by God um, I remember thinking like how dare you do this to me like I had prayed prayers before, like, God, I can handle myself being sick, but please do not make me go through my son um, having eczema and trying to figure out how to heal him. And so I just sank deep down into a very 
um, dark and depressed place. I didn't realize it at the time, but in hindsight, I can tell, um, in hindsight, I realized that I was deeply depressed. I stayed home so much. It was hard for me to be around family. Um, a lot of my friendships kind of fell by the wayside and um, it was hard for me for many reasons. Some, some of the reasons were physical um, pain that I missed a lot of Sundays just because I was just feeling so bad. Um, but mentally, like, I just felt so broken. I felt so disconnected from myself. I didn't even know who I was anymore. Um, I just felt so lost in this um, sadness and depression that life was not going <laughs> the way that I thought it was going to be. And um, just deep pain that I felt like I had prayers that were unanswered. The way that I can think to describe like the first year of my son's life is just the dark ages. I can't adequately describe it to you, um, but I just felt like well, there was this deep dark cloud just residing over my head and I couldn't get out from under it. Um, I had no hope. Um, I had really lost my connection with God. I, like I said, I had felt betrayed by Him. I had no hope that I was going to find healing, um, that my son would be healed. It was just a very dark and hard place. And um, it got so bad to the point where my husband was praying for me. Um, for healing and for relief from symptoms. And I can remember telling him after he prayed for me, like, is it bad that as you were praying, all I could think of was God's not going to do it. He's not going to bring me relief. He doesn't want to bring me relief. He doesn't care. He's not healing. Um, I got to the point where I was just tired of praying. I was tired of asking for healing. And I just felt very numb in a lot of ways. So actually kind of shortly after that incident where my husband was praying over me and I was just feeling so numb and just like, I didn't even want to bring it to God anymore. I didn't want to um, talk to him about it for fear of just having unanswered prayer again. Um, that my brother-in-law, shout out to Jordan Work, um, told us about this weekend-long service, um, I don't know what you want to call it, conference or something, healing conference that was going on um, at a church that wasn't too far from our house. And the man that was teaching this seminar or conference, um, his whole ministry is teaching people about the connections between spiritual issues and sickness and physical manifestations of sickness. Um, and so to be quite honest, I absolutely did not want to go to this service. I was really wrestling with it in my mind and my heart um, because I had prayed for healing so many times. I had been prayed over for healing so many times and it just felt like over and over again, the answer was no, no, no. Um, so I was scared to go. I was scared to go and open myself up to being vulnerable before God and asking him to heal me again. I have always known <laughs> that I needed more healing than just physical. I've always known and just felt deep inside myself that I needed more healing than just my eczema being fixed or going away. Um, through years of experiencing eczema, as I said before, I've just accumulated so much like mental and emotional and spiritual baggage and I've known that I needed deeper healing than just physical. So even though I didn't want to go and 
Uh, we almost didn't. I just felt this still small voice inside telling me, you need to go. Like, you need to go. Just go. But I decided to listen to that voice and to go. Um, and when we got there, I don't even remember what song it was that everybody was singing um, in worship, but it was essentially just inviting the Spirit's presence, welcoming the Spirit's presence, the Holy Spirit of God's presence into the room. And I basically cried <laughs> through the majority of the service um, and just felt my heart kind of cracking open and softening and was just praying, Lord, you know, it may not be physical healing, um, but whatever kind of healing you want to accomplish in me today, I ask that you would accomplish it. Lord, I invite your Holy Spirit to heal me in whatever way you deem best today. And so <clears throat> after the service, um, you know, there was an option that you could go up and receive prayer. And I, part of me just wanted to leave and not go up and ask for prayer um, because I was honestly scared. I was scared to be vulnerable and I was scared to lay it out there and ask God for healing um, and to have somebody pray over me. Again, I felt that still small voice saying, go up, go up and ask for prayer. Um, invite me in. Just felt a very strong pull to go up and uh, receive prayer. And so I was waiting in line. There was quite a few people that were uh, waiting to be prayed over and I was waiting in line for this man to pray over me. Um, we were waiting for quite a while. When we were almost up to him, somebody cut in front of us and right there was the first divine intervention of the Lord. Um, one of the first divine interventions of him because another woman who was a part of the ministry team signaled me over. Um, and so I went over to her to receive prayer and she started out by asking um, what I wanted prayer for. And I basically said, I don't know if you have ever heard of eczema, but blah, 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 like just told her what I wanted prayer for. And when I said, when I asked if she had ever heard of eczema, she just had this very knowing look on her face. Um, and she's like, oh yes, I do. And so that right away just felt like um, a God wink, as I call it, because I felt seen and I felt like she could relate and she knew what I was talking about. I don't know the details of how she knows about eczema, um, but she knew. I could just tell that she knew um, and that there was empathy there. I basically just gave her a little history of my health and that I was longing for um, healing and restoration of my body and I don't really remember, to be quite honest, like all the details of what I shared with her, but I do vividly remember her asking me. It's interesting because she didn't even go into like the physical side of things, but she asked me if I ever struggled with like self-hatred or doubting myself or not feeling like I'm good enough or always feeling like I need to do more, more, more to earn people's favor or earn God's favor. Um, and I kind of just broke down crying because that was me to a T. Um, and it was incredible because all I told her was my physical symptoms. And then she comes back with this like a spiritual, mental, emotional question for me. And so I told her, yes, like it's something that I've struggled with my whole life is thinking that I need to do more, be more, um, to please people and to please God. And constantly judging myself, feeling like I can never measure up <clears throat> to the standard that I am creating for myself that God isn't even asking me to attain. And so she lovingly but bluntly told me that 
I was putting myself um, higher than God because I was placing myself as judge over myself. Even though Jesus died on the cross um, to be the atonement for my sin, to where before God the Father, I am blameless. My sin was made white as snow. Um, though once crimson, it is white as snow. And he has cast my sin as far as the east is from the west. He has made me a new creation. He calls me fearfully and wonderfully made, beloved, a royal priesthood, um, treasured. And yet here I am judging myself, being so hard on myself and saying that Jesus, your sacrifice is not enough for me to be able to accept myself and to forgive myself. And I had never had anybody put it to me quite like that, but it was so powerful um, to hear her say that, to realize what I had been doing for so long. You know, I just kind of always thought I have really low self-esteem, um, I'm shy, like I, I never really thought of these things as like judging myself so harshly as like a sin against God and a sin against myself because I'm made in the image of God and I'm redeemed. I'm a new creation because of what Jesus did, but yet for so many years, I just was not fully accepting God's gift to me. And I was living in a state of really just self-hatred. And so she walked me through a prayer of repentance and confession to God um, of placing myself above him as a judge of my soul and for not accepting his gift of grace to me um, and of freedom that he wants to offer me. And so she had me pray and confess that and repent and ask for forgiveness to God. She kind of led me through a prayer and then just asked me to keep going as the Spirit led. And then she led me through a prayer of forgiving myself for this sin and for releasing the sin and for accepting God's grace um, and mercy towards me and for rejecting the lies that um, I'm not good enough and I have to keep trying, trying, trying to earn the Lord's favor um, or the favor of other humans in my life. So when I went up to her to ask for prayer, I can remember just feeling so overheated and anxious and I still just felt that heavy dark cloud over my head. She held my hands as she was praying over me, just praying healing into me and praying the Holy Spirit's power into my life and my heart to illumine my eyes and my heart to the truth and to just set me free. And I remember her praying because um, eczema is very much related to the immune system so she was like saying immune system cool down like skin like praying healing into my whole being and I don't know this might sound crazy to people I know for me growing up I did not I was not raised in a church where this type of thing happened this type of healing happened um, but as she was holding my hands um, and praying over me her hands were moving like forward and kind of pushing into me and it seemed involuntary like she wasn't doing it but an outside force was doing it um and <laughs> i kid you not like i went from feeling so overheated and overwhelmed and sad and depressed to this cool breeze just felt like it was washing over me as her hands were like pushing into my hands um i believe truly that it was the power and the fresh wind of the holy spirit that was just 
transferring into me and setting me free, I instantaneously felt this burden and this heavy, heavy weight just lifted off of me in that instant. And for so long, I, you know, I blamed God for my problems and I blamed God for my sickness and for not healing me and I felt like it was this major block that like I couldn't get close to God because of this illness and because he had allowed this illness into my life um, but once I prayed those prayers and she prayed over me like that all just lifted off of me and I could feel the Father's love. I could feel God's love and favor for me. And I could feel him looking on me with tenderness and could feel that his heart was aching um, alongside of mine in my suffering and that he wanted to walk alongside me in my suffering and that I wasn't alone. Um, for so long I felt like I was alone, especially when I was freshly postpartum, I just felt so alone and like God wasn't near. Um, but I had realized that it was lies that I was believing, um, lies that were from the pits of hell, honestly, lies that Satan wanted me to believe to keep me back from experiencing the true freedom of the gospel and the true um, amazing gift that Jesus wants to offer us is the gift of being able to walk alongside him and to have his help in our lives. I can remember being afraid that once I left that church that it would go away and that the depression would come back and the hopelessness would come back um, and the dark thoughts would come back but they didn't <laughs> and um, it's been about two years since that and I still to this day you know I have some physical symptoms with my eczema I know without a doubt that the Lord healed me of that deep depression that I was in and that anxiety and that hopelessness because I can deal with symptoms now without spiraling into that deep dark place that I was in and I am just so, so thankful to God for setting me free and for helping me to see him for who he is, a loving father who cares deeply for me and who wants to walk alongside me in my trial. And he's not just looking far off down on me, um, thinking, man, when is she gonna get it together? Um, <laughs> no, I'm his beloved daughter that he loves deeply and that he wants to help carry me through the hard days. But I just wanted to wrap this up by saying, sometimes when we're depressed, we don't even realize it. Sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. You're just so deep in the thick of it that you can't even think straight to realize that you maybe are believing lies from the enemy. I'm learning a lot about the spiritual roots of illness, whether that's mental, emotional, or physical illness, and the spiritual, mental, emotional, physical being is so interconnected. You cannot heal physically without healing mentally and emotionally. Um, these are things that I did not realize for the longest time, but I've been learning so much and I feel like the Lord is revealing so much to me in this. And as I've been learning more and more about this, I've just been thinking back on and recalling and just feeling so grateful for how God healed me two years ago from this postpartum depression and how he set me free, how he exposed the lies that I was believing, replaced them with truth, and just gave me so much freedom and so much peace. Have I had hard days since then? Yes, I've had very hard days physically, um, but the reason that I know that it is a lasting healing is because consistently over the past two years, 
um, hard things have happened in my life, but I have never gone back to that just deep place of depression and despair and hopelessness. And so if you are a mama that is freshly postpartum, if you found yourself dealing with postpartum depression or just uncomfortable um, in your skin, uncomfortable with who you are, struggling mentally and emotionally, I would just really encourage you to bring it before the Lord and ask Him to expose any wrong thinking that might be in your mind. Um, ask Him to expose any lies that you may be believing that the enemy has you ensnared in um, and to reject those lies and then instead embrace the truth of the goodness of God and what he has for you because I truly believe that it is not his will for any of us to be stuck in a state of depression and hopelessness that is not what Jesus came and died on the cross for. Um, I know that it's a broken and fallen world and really bad, horrible things happen and life is really rough, but I do know that people throughout history who follow Jesus have endured so much with joy, with deep, unending, beautiful joy because of the power of the Holy Spirit and I know that God wants that for each and every one of you. So I would just encourage you to draw near to the Lord and ask Him to set you free because He wants to. He so wants to. Um, so often I know for myself, like I allowed myself to be ensnared and wrapped up and tangled in those lies, but that is not what the Lord has for us. Um, and he wants to set you free. God formed us in our mother's wombs. He intricately wove us together with loving hands. He knows us so intimately. He knows every day that we are going to live on this earth. He wants to walk alongside of us. He wants to be in relationship with us. He wants to be our lover and our protector and provider. Um, the God of the universe wants this and loves us so much. I just didn't accept that for so long. The last two verses of Psalm 139 verses 23 and 24 are, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting." Those two verses have kind of been an anthem for me. I praise God that two years ago when he freed me from postpartum depression, um, he searched me, he knew me, and he revealed to me the grievous way in me. He revealed to me the lies I was believing and how it was holding me back from healing. It is a regular prayer for me right now because I want to go deeper into spiritual healing. I want to go deeper into emotional, mental, and spiritual health. And so I'm asking him to pull out those weeds, pull out any lies that I am clinging on to um, that are holding me back from full healing um, and from life abundant in him. And I'm asking him to lead me in the way everlasting the way everlasting. That sounds pretty darn beautiful and appealing to me. Um, so I would just invite you into that same thing. Ask the Lord to search you, to know you, to try you, and to reveal the contents of your heart to you um, and to help set you free. I know I've already said it many times, but he wants to set you free. He does. We just have to sometimes get out of our own way and allow him to do the work. I've prayed over this video. I hope that it was a blessing to you, an encouragement to you. Um, I pray God be glorified, um, that his goodness and his mercy towards his children would be revealed in some way to you through this video. May the Lord richly bless you pray health and healing and life abundant for you.
thank you so much for watching and I will see you, Lord willing, in the next video.